The rise of Napoli, transfer strategy, Spalletti's tactics, Serie A champions. Napoli's last Scudetto victory was over 30 years ago in 1990, with Diego Armando Maradona as their leader. Despite several near misses in recent years, the team has been thwarted by northern powerhouses like Juventus, AC Milan, and Inter Milan. However, this season, Napoli appears to be on track for a long-awaited title win. Luciano Spalletti's exceptional squad in the 2022-2023 season appears to be one that will ultimately bring the Serie A title to Naples. Their statistics thus far are remarkable. They have won 62 points out of a possible 69, scored 56 goals, and only conceded 15 goals in 23 games. Their team seems to have little weaknesses, and this could take them all the way into the Serie A and Champions League. In this video, we'll be exploring Gil Azuri's transfer strategy last summer, Spalletti's tactics at the club, and how these have combined to lead them to a title and European Cup charge. But before we get started, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notification bell for more football news and analytics. Transfer Upheaval The transfer upheaval at Napoli is one reason for their success in the 2022-2023 season. Last winter, Napoli announced that their captain and native player Lorenzo Insigni has signed for Toronto FC and would leave at the end of 2021-2022 season. Despite this, the Azzurri finished third in Serie A, which allowed them to return to the Champions League group stage after being absent for two years. When Napoli secured a place in the Champions League and had a chance at the winning title, many expected them to make big moves in the transfer market during the summer, including signing top attackers, experienced defenders, and a world-class goalkeeper. Napoli has a history of inconsistent performances in April, which has prevented them from challenging for the Scudetto. In a crucial match against Forentia last season, the visitors dealt Napoli a devastating 3-2 defeat, dropping them to third place. Similar heartbreaking losses occurred in April 2018 and 2016, which saw Napoli fall short of overtaking Juventus and ultimately miss out on the title. As a result, many fans had to settle for hoping for a Champions League group stage berth rather than a league championship. The Napoli management team was aware that a strong squad was needed to progress beyond the group stage in the Champions League, which has been a challenge for the club. However, Napoli fans were disappointed when key players such as Insigne, Fabian Ruiz, Koulibaly, and Mertens left the club, with some even expressing a desire to leave. The stars of Napoli's past during the Morosi Sarriera faded away one by one, replaced by relatively unknown names such as Kavice Kalafsielia, Kim Min Jae, Tangu Namboli, as well as players who made a name for themselves in lower-level Italian teams. These new players may not have ignited the same excitement as the predecessors, but they quickly showed that they were solid and dependable. It would be unwise to assume that Napoli were financially unable to go out in the transfer market. Under the ownership of Aurelio del Laurentiis, Napoli definitely had the financial. Still, Napoli's plan did not involve spending heavily on marquee signings to replace departing players which led them to passing up on the chance to sign Cristiano Ronaldo from Manchester United. It included bringing in fresh and exciting talent from across the globe. Although it raised eyebrows at first, Napoli's approach to the transfer market is now being seen as a success, turning what seemed like a disastrous summer into a triumph. One hand on the trophy. Napoli is excelling in both Serie A and in the Champions League, having remained unbeaten and securing the top spot. Before the World Cup 2022 break in Qatar, the Azzurri had a stunning average of 2.94 goals per game and only conceded 0.76 goals per game. Their successful blueprint has fostered a team that is gaining in confidence and self-assurance that they can go all the way in both competitions. After 23 games, the Neapolitans have amassed an impressive 62 points and held a 15-point lead over second-placed Inter Milan. This start has been among the best in Serie A history, with only Inter in the 2006-2007 and Juventus in 2018-2019 earning more points after the same number of games. Additionally, their lead is the largest after match day 23 in the era of 3 points for a win. Napoli's dominance in Serie A this season is unmatched in Europe's top 5 leagues. With 62 points from 23 games, they have amassed more points than any other team. Barcelona, with 59 points from 22 games, is the only team that could match their tally after 23 league matches. Napoli has established itself as the top team in Italy by displaying an attacking prowess that has seen them score 56 goals, while being solid at the back, conceding only 15 goals, the least in Serie A. Their goal difference of plus 41 is the best across Europe's top five leagues, and they've carried this good form onto the Champions League. Since the 2009-2010 season, when Jose Marino's Inter Milan won the Champions League, no Italian team has managed to win the tournament, and Juventus in 2017 was the last team to reach the final. 
Although Juventus famously reached two finals during the mid-2010s, they were unable to lift the trophy. Napoli has brought hope that they can break this trend for Italian clubs in the Champion League. Their attacking prowess has overwhelmed clubs like Ajax, who they scored 10 goals against in two games, and Liverpool, who they beat 4-1. The Italian club averaged 3.33 goals per game in the UEFA Champions League group stage. For the second time ever, they topped the group in the Champions League, scoring a record-breaking 20 goals in the process, surpassing any other Italian team in the competition's history and outscoring all other teams in the group stage this season. Fast forward to present day, the club have accomplished an historic feat in their 2-0 win against Intrat Frankfurt by advancing in the Champions League quarterfinals for the first time ever. Napoli are now considered favorites to reach the UEFA Champions League quarterfinals, which would be an even more historic achievement for the club. Napoli's playing style under Luciano Spalletti In addition to their success, the Partenopi's style of play has been exciting to watch, as they have adopted a fast and direct approach living up to the promise of coach Luciano Spalletti to build a young and entertaining team. Spalletti's appointment as coach of Napoli wasn't exciting, having been sacked by Inter after a lackluster performance in the previous season. However, his decision to pursue a young and dynamic team demonstrated his confidence, particularly for a team expected to compete in the Champions League. So far, his approach has been vindicated, and he has successfully blended the old and new players to showcase the young and fun philosophy. Namely, Napoli's left winger Cavice Cavastelia and center forward Victor Osimhen have been exceptional performers this season. Cavastelia is currently leading Serie A's assist charts with 9 assists, while Osimhen has scored the highest number of goals, 18 in total, putting him ahead of other players by a margin of 5 goals. Spalletti's 4-3-3 attacking formation heavily relies on Cavastelia and Osimhen. Despite playing on the left, Cavastelia is the main attacking threat, making diagonal off-the-ball runs toward the goal receiving two feet and dribbling at defenders, and attacking the far post when the ball is on the opposite side. He favors cutting inside and using his right foot, but can also go around the outside. Osimhen plays in central positions, and his main objective is to finish off the team's attacking moves. He also takes charge of leading and starting their pressing game. This season, he has profited from several turnovers and scored goals soon after the team won possession. Napoli, under Spalletti's guidance, play with an intense and aggressive style, both on and off the ball, seeking to press high and keep their opponents away from their goal. The teams aim to regain possession as quickly as possible after losing it, thereby maintaining pressure on their opponents. They press hard across the field with one of their midfielders, typically Selinski, joining the striker to press the opposition's center backs and goalkeeper during goal kicks. Napoli's wide players are positioned in a second line of fourth, with the other central midfielders forming a part of the press. Their role include moving forward to support the first line of press, covering wide areas from side to side, and competing for second balls if the opposition goes long. When the team drops into mid-block, the midfield three quickly recover into solid shape in the center of the pitch. Such intense movements require Napoli players to work extremely hard from the start of every match. Due to the high number of games and the demanding style of play that Spalletti requires, rotation is inevitable for Napoli. However, Spalletti has a preferred defensive core, consisting of goalkeeper Alex Merritt, center backs Amir Romney and Kim Min Jae, and center midfielders Stanislav Lobotka, Frank Angusia, and Pieter Zelensky. Full backs Mario Rue and Giovanni Di Lorenzo are also regulars in the starting lineup. Spalletti's unwavering selection policy has led to a steady stream of positive outcomes. Even when other players are rotated in, they perform at the same high standard expected of the regulars. Moreover, by substituting in fresh players, Spalletti provides much-needed respite to those who have played the most minutes. In contrast to Napoli's previous season, where Spalletti rotated more often, especially in midfield, this season he has been consistent in his team selection. The departure of Fabian Ruiz, who was a regular starter, may have contributed to this, as Spalletti struggled to find the right position for him. Napoli's midfield three have achieved nearly perfect balance this season. They rotate frequently, allowing them to play in both 2-1 and 1-2 formations. With Lobotka at the base and Anguissa and Zelensky ahead of him, they can play in a 2-1 formation. Whereas, in the 1-2 formation, Labutka plays at the base and Anguissa and Zelensky play further up the pitch. The team has thrived on this midfield consistency, as evidenced by their performance so far this season. Another example where the team is not significantly weakened when fringe players are introduced is with forwards Giacomo Raspadori and Giovanni Simone. Raspadori possesses a natural goal-scoring ability and often looks for ways to shoot and find space close to the goal. With the ability to use either foot, he is unpredictable for defenders and can take shots rapidly. Simone is an asset in open games, utilizing his speed and straightforward running to exploit any gaps left by the opposition's breakdowns.
This is particularly effective when Napoli takes the lead and opponents are pushing forward for an equalizer. He is a decent finisher with either foot, can provide assists, and make clever runs to find gaps in the box. For the first time in a long time, there's hope in Naples. Although outsiders looking in will attribute this to just three men, Luciano Spalletti, Victor Osiman, and Cavice Cavaselia, it's clear that it's been a huge team effort. Balancing the Serie A and Champions League is no easy feat, and a good man management will see them go all the way. The question is, do you believe that going all the way is a possibility for Napoli, or will they fall short somewhere? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the subscribe button for all things football.